uh, all protocols duly observed. Mr. Chairman, I want to say uh, something very tangentially about the, this uh, social investment program and the kind of response we are getting. Mr. President, I'm happy the caliber of people who are from the executive that are in this presidential tax force. This National Assembly since inception, this ninth assembly, we have the under the leadership of the uh, people who are over here, have been able to make sure that uh, not only that it's bipartisan, but it's single, we have one single purpose in everything we do. So we will not want from the, the, chief, the executive arm of the government that we are working with that they have been making so much effort to make sure that we are united in our approach we give to the executive. That is the same from the same executive that we come and start trying to malign the National Assembly. That will only make it difficult for the leadership to manage us. So I'm just giving cautionary warning. <laughs> that, that done, sir, I want to talk about the NCDC. You see, the DG as a civil servant working for, a public servant working for government has his own limitations. He has a lot of needs. You know, I approaches my committee during the budgets to discuss with them to see a way or how to solve, uh, problem, solve how, how to handle their problems. We have problems from the ministry that we can't give them ceiling. So when you come here and we continue battling here and there, it becomes difficult to attend to their problems with the result that we have found ourselves where we are today. So I am using this opportunity made possible by Corona, by say, uh, pandemic, to plead with this presidential tax force. Don't leave the problems of uh, NCDC to Ministry of Health. We have seen it that Ministry of Health cannot manage it. So I am using the opportunity to plead with you that everything we want to do now, let us get, plan it properly and ensure that uh, the NCDC is not just uh, exists on paper, because it, it, it was just uh, its assembly that brought it into, into being. You know, that doesn't exist in paper, but is firmly rooted in this country. So that we, instead of uh, being reactionary each time we have an, uh, uh, any scourge that uh, threatens Nigeria's health system, who will be running at us together. So I want, I'm begging that this opportunity, we should not, uh, 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 we, should, we must not miss it so that we can get things done for our people. Mm -hmm. If we do that, it means that NCDC can do much. They have shown this limited period they have the capacity of what they can do. And I know that if properly supported and given financial backing to do the job, they are going to do more than this. The other issue I want to say is that, uh, yes, we already, in the basic, uh, health, uh, basic health care provision form, that uh, the National Assembly graciously made sure that uh, it will happen, it's uh, part of our uh, annual budgetary process, that we have 1%. We, in that law, and the nation, and the, that, uh, the, that, uh, uh, the, the, the law, uh, making provision for that. We had all, well, uh, the NCDC was not properly captured with the result that already is before the National Assembly now, the amendment of that act to get things done. And with the kind of situation we are having now with the emergency of this uh, pandemic, we are, it is also part of the proposal we are presenting before the National Assembly that we will have to scale this, uh, scale the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the percentage allocation to basic, uh, basic uh, revision fund from 1% that every five years or thereabout, you move it to 2%, every other five years to, uh, to, uh, to 3%, as the case may be, so that uh, they can address adequately the health challenges of this country. Bearing also in mind that uh, the primary health care is the basic thing 
uh, the, the basic problem that is facing Nigeria. And if we are able to handle that much, we may not have so many problems that will be taken out to the secondary and tertiary. So this is uh, the issue which we are trying to address. And then I have already sent a proposal to you that I have sent a proposal to uh, uh, which I, I sent to the SCDC to the Minister for Health about the deal we are pro pro that I am proposing for this pandemic. Following in line with some other developed, uh, 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 other challenged countries of the world, I have looked at their legislations and seen what they have done. I have made such proposals. I have sent, I just sent one to the Minister for Health to look at and like, criticize and get back to me. And then I have sent to also the SCDC. They are looking at that. If we look at all these problems now, we will look at the issue of handling pandemics when any time it comes. And we will also update, uh, amend the 1926 uh, Quarantine uh, uh, Act to make, which, uh, to make sure that uh, it meets the challenge of, uh, uh, of the present uh, 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 level of development in the country. So these are some of the proposals we have uh, in place. And then the other issue is uh, the uh, I'm not the law. The other issue is I'm talking about uh, the uh, the NAFDAQ. We must go coordinated and know what NAFDAQ is doing in terms of this uh, hydrochloroquine and other treatments that are this. It's very, very important that we do. So that if we have this coordinated approach. Then the people who have such challenges can have us at least. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Honourable Chief. Thank you, Mr. Senior President. It's not for time. I will just uh, leave my question. Thank you very much, and thank the leadership of the Presidential Committee for the very elaborate briefing that we have got in this. And I will let one of those that I have said, glory to God, if it is now that I, the system that I, I, I got into some years back, I don't know where I will have found myself, possibly I will have found myself once. I was rescued in the UK after spending about three good months. That tells us the state of infrastructure. Today, I don't think, if anybody should find himself in this kind of situation, possibly we should be preparing for his grave. The Excellency, I'm so much worried about uh, the state of the parties. From the briefing of the Minister of Health, Issues were raised in the country just as a speaker body. When we have a review, the views that Chinese are going to be brought into the country, many people raised objection to it. And I thought that should have been a pointer to have a very soothing report by the time it's coming here today. Whether it's going to be asked question or a question, I need to get prepared. I'm not comfortable with the answer you get, with the answers you get on those particular issues. At least from this time we are stepping into the country to the point where we came to, there should be a very good monitor report, if possible, video to allay the fears of Nigerians that there's nothing of this group that are just coming to help us. The other question, the whole issue that have been brought by the other people is that these are people who are coming to infect Nigerians. And if you, as Minister of Health, is not known to you, their exact position. I'm worried too. I may be supposed to join other Nigerians in this kind of fear. There's war in the economic that is going on internationally. Some people believe in that. Even this morning, somebody sent me a video of what is happening in Lagos, which I believe is online development. What is the implication? They are saying the, way the, the government forced them to lock them in so that they can put 5G. The video is bad. It tells you the kind of psyche and how people are using social media now to give out very, very bad. And I said it, said it to somebody, he's a very respected, highly placed person. Do you believe this nonsense? That's the ultimate question I ask him. We should do more. Do more in coordinating ourselves, bringing us together, even if it's their start and go to that. And you are an activist that I know while you are in the service of our, uh, uh, and for you to tell me that you don't know whether there is uh, uh, allowance to pay to, to <laughs> 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 and there is, 
You know, I think it's sad. We should go beyond that. This is a family, we are talking as a family, one and one woman. We should be willing to divulge information with this access. If there are lapses, that's the essence of this sitting. So that we can see and correct and take inputs so that we strive and do better. I, I say and I want to say that for emphasis that it is good, it's important that we are told our situations. As a, as, as a unionist former, I know that it's hazard allowance. But the hazard allowance that we pay is not what the parliament is now asking. We are asking for a special intervention. In other countries, another claim, I give in insurance to people who are doing this kind of services. If we are not giving any insurance, what then are we doing? To encourage them. They are, they are, they are, they are the front line. What are we doing? I think this is the essence of the question which I, I got the speaker right. This is the reason for this question. I'm also concerned and worried about how we manage our talents. I met the coordinator for Majiji Naka in an airport, maybe he has to go to Masebo Kau in UK on our way back. And he told me then of the good news that he was going to be the Jinaka. And he told me his own kind of person, how intelligent the person had been so true. And we saw it when he came. But a lot of that are not in the country here today. Maybe some of them will be forced back because of the current situation. It means then we are not utilizing our talents in our own country. I watched a video in Stadia how some young Nigerians in Jaws were able to put back, I watched on NT, the in, the ventilator machines. And they said they had never seen this machine. The CMD also guaranteed and offered and said those machines were collectively uh, uh, completely collapsed and they put it now back to use it. And they said they can produce this, not just the fact that they did, but that they can produce it. And I also watched another video of one young Nigerian again who possibly put up small, small things and now gave a very good history. Technically, I'm with you denying background from what he explained, I believe what he was saying, that he could produce something like that. Yes, would be out to look for the cheaper one and maybe easy to make a ready-made material. But I think it's high time for us to encourage those who are doing things like that. I've not heard of the committee inviting these people to come before them, get the briefing, so that people like that can be encouraged because this is another time for us to open windows of opportunity for our own country. Ghana here, Ghana, I'm saying that. My daughter, Fetty, she had cancer. I took her to uh, Zaria, Shika. The doctor there, he said, was the one that advised me, take her to Ghana. He said, not because they don't have the facility. Power, acid, and other things will be the one that will keep this lady here. And I took her to Ghana. They have an excellent, they have a very excellent hospital there. Has, if you get to Ghana, you are, you, are, you are done. If you get to Ghana on cancer, you don't need to go to Dubai, you don't need to go to UK. What are we doing to encourage our talents? It's not fair, and I think it is time now for us to begin to recognize. And I want to play with you, sir, that I think it would be good to engage those young Nigerians. And that's not just the, uh, they are able to be hand of manufacturers. Let's utilize the information we have available. I think it will help us. Thank you for the much information. And maybe that's it to add to what uh, the DSC is saying. And the speaker too. You see, section 14 4 is very, very clear. You know everything we do. You do not have any footage. In up here in the north, whatever happened to us, we say, Kajara, Allah has made it so. And so some people may have corona. Virus, and that would be the lesson they would take is to take him to the graveyard. And by taking to the graveyard through the washing of the dead body, too, other people will contaminate, they will get the contamination. The first case that was reported from the North Air was from Wasi, my constituency, of Chinese because we are all suspicious. And thank God they were tested negative. But I think it's not just sufficient. We have to go out to, 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 to do the right thing. And I'm concerned, too, that. Thank God to Mr. President and thank him for what he has done. Otherwise, what to eat now would have been a problem in this country, even because. And for any season, the fast approaching. We have to get 
over this matter so that we allow the local farmers go to produce all we Otherwise, after the crash of Poland, we will crash of Hong again. And I don't know why we want to put that in this country. It's important that we have to work fast and uh, maybe take again emphasis for what this president has said. Same president has said. I also live in Guarimba. To get out of Guarimba to this place, we are making mockery of what is called lockdown. It's a mockery. You find you. At least videos are shown of various countries how this thing is done. That goes to give the emphasis that in this palace that is going to be given, it should cut across. Because if you ask somebody to stay in Bauchi or ask somebody to just stay indoors, what then are you giving? And when the people was giving, it was just about seven states that were selected for the purpose of this pilot that was going to be given us as a step measure. And I think we need to open more windows and do more for the remaining parties so that we will be able to solve this matter once and for all and get back to the city. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, the Chairman, I think you can respond to those issues raised already and then we'll take the next uh, round of uh, comments and, and, and questions from the Sandwich and our colleagues. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. President. The Speaker, the House of Reps, the leadership and membership of the National Assembly, Mr. President, the Chairman of the Task Force, Honorable Ministers and members of the Task Force. I'd like to begin by extending my commendation to Mr. President for the steady and very proactive way of manner uh, he has provided leadership for this pandemic. A lot of us who are familiar with the debate regime in the US right now are aware of the accusations leveled against President Trump that he slept while Rome bond. In our own case, from the very outset, Mr. President took a very proactive step by putting together a very, very powerful team. And so far, your job, what you've done, has been very, very reassuring. Uh, just a few comments. Uh, I'm a little bit curious. I don't like the U.S. where you will hardly hear of people recovering from uh, this disease for those who are affected. Here, we have good news and of course we have the bad news. The good news being that as we hear it that, that people have been afflicted, we also hear it without Lagos or Abuja in discharging people. And my curiosity is this. It's very taking into account the raging debate in the U.S. as to the efficacy, if any, of the use of chloroquine or is it hydrochloroquine or is it I'm not good at that. You know, what is it that you are using to treat these people? You know, that leads to their discharges after, after, it is very, very reassuring to know that there's some medication that you are using here that has resulted in these people getting well. I think so far what we have like about close to about 10 feet or not, if not even more. And it's very reassuring. Then we have to know what medication is being used to treat these people. That's one. And then number two, and of course, this question is related to the minister, ministers of health. And then number two, as I understand it, the reason for this lockdown is for purposes of promoting and enhancing containment. And there's also an assumption, an underlying assumption, that within that period, you should have also developed your capacity to test. The last I checked, just listening to the presentation just now, I believe from the Minister of Health and also from the, the DG, 
of uh, the NCDC ability. You know, it's the effect that we only tested close to about 200,000 combined. And I'm also aware, or I believe, that we're not having real time testing or real time results. I think it, it, it takes about, about three days or thereabouts, you know, for people to get their results back. In the US today, they are fighting to have uh, 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 test results come out within five to 15 minutes. And there's a reason they are doing that. For some of argue that yes, because Trump wants to reopen the, uh, the country because of his uh, re-election uh, uh, activities coming up, you know. But anyhow it is, that country needs to be reopened someday, and ours also needs to be reopened. Now, if we continue to go at this rate of just about 200 and uh, something thousand out of 200 million people being tested within a period of, uh, uh, let's say, two weeks or, uh, or three weeks, because this lockdown came into effect about the 31st of, uh, 31st of March. So if that is what we've had, 200,000 tested in the population of 200 million, what happens when this lockdown is over. For who? As soon as lockdown was to end the 18th, as currently uh, the director of the president, and assuming that you do not extend this, there's no extension. So if it were to end on the 13th, with the testing, with the total number of those tested, still standing around maybe 300,000 in a population of uh, 200 uh, million. What? And won't be back to square one on that. And they're just following up on, on, following up on the, uh, Mr. Speaker's uh, uh, interrogatory you know. Uh, my, my, my take on that is that in the north, or most of the northern countries, or northern states, the reason we have fewer or no uh, uh, index cases or cases are there, is because we're not telling anybody. And we just listen to the minister say that uh, uh, they have to be raising to test. So if, if you don't have fever, you're not coughing, you're not, uh, what is that one? You're, you're not breathless. That's it, I believe. Eh? Can't you see, we call it the asthmatic, asthmatic, what I call it right there? Eh? Uh -huh. you, you can carry with, you can have the symptoms without the, uh, even manifest, I don't know what that's called. Huh? Uh, I think this, uh, it can be without it. Exactly. Uh, and you can see distribute it. So you must test. If you don't test these people, it will be societal for this government to attempt to reopen this country and to, to, to bring this lockdown to a close without testing a significant number of citizens. That's one. Then uh, let me come to. Uh, Yes, yes. First, I want to thank you for your acknowledgement of the role of members of the National Assembly. Uh, listening to you, I was very, very impressed and we outlined what you thought could be best, uh, uh, what activities could best carry out by the National Assembly in mobilizing the people reorienting the people, uh, basically teaching them about hygiene and what have you. That is because of the role of Occupy. Because we are grassroots. We are the people closest to the citizenry at home. Now as a consequence of that, I want to bring to your, to your uh, attention. Uh, we were told uh, a couple of days ago, you know, when we had some Members of executive who appeared before us about the directive from Mr. President that uh, the 150,000 tr uh, trucks, mm -hmm. 150 trucks of rice uh, coming from being released by uh, customs and the 70,000 70, metric tons mm -hmm. of, of grain. Being released from uh, 
with government is to be shared only to Lagos, uh, the LCT, and Mukun. And some of us, we took a certain with that. That that would be discriminatory. Uh, Mr. President is the president of this whole country. We have lockdowns all across this country, across the existing. Yet, even though the president's own regulation only uh, uh, mentions uh, those three states, but the other governors acting pursuant the president's regulation and the same for a time act have also proceeded to also lock down, you know, to complement the efforts right there uh, of uh, uh, this task force to contain uh, uh, this disease. So it will be very, very, very absurd, frankly, to tell those who are not uh, within these three uh, states mentioned. Mm. Uh, who are also being quarantined at home or being locked down at home, that are not entitled to these palliatives because it's not going from LCT, uh, uh, LCT, Lagos, and I, I can't believe that would be the intent of Mr. President. So I want to appeal to you, uh, uh, Chairman Task Force, to address this issue so that these palliatives go to every state of the Union. That's number one. And then number two, sir, I would like to add that we, the members of the National Assembly, as already indicated earlier, we are those who represent these people. We are those closest to these people. We are best suited to know those who need this help. It is not everybody who is on lockdown that requires help. For sure, I'm on lockdown here and I'm not looking for anybody to give me rights or give me a grace, you know. Uh, 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 if so far, the, the same thing at home, on the lockdown. But we are in the best position, being the representatives of the people, the people who contested the elections, who went to these people, both poor and rich, to cast votes for us. We know them uh, better than even the, uh, the, the governors. I mentioned here a couple of, a couple of days ago that some of these people, these poor and the vulnerable who need this help. Some of them cannot even call the government of the state. Even me, I, I give an example here as a demonstrator president. I don't have the phone number of my government. If I can't even reach my government on the phone, how can those uh, 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 poor and vulnerable you know, reach out uh, to, to the government? So the point we are making is we, the representative people, should be included in the logistics of the delivery of these uh, uh, palliatives to the poor and the vulnerable in our community. Uh, let me yield for now and allow others to make a contribution. Thank you very much. Yes. And <laughs> I think we need to, to look at this, and this is the essence of this kind of meeting. Why can't we devote more health resources? those areas that are now deep inside, without neglecting those areas that have no incidents, getting them prepared, should there be any incidents that they are able to handle. So you can, you can, you can continue. Yeah. Let me just add this right there. Even those palliatives are not being given to those who tested positive. <laughs> it's not being given to them. It is being given to the citizens who are on lockdown. So it really doesn't matter whether you test it positive or not. As we speak, they call us every day. As I speak, let me just even just tell you, as I speak to you, beginning tomorrow, on my own, not the federal government, I am sharing 5,000 naira to 200,000 people per word. And I have 85 words. This is coming from my pocket. And I'm also giving this to those who are very, very poor. Who needs this? Thing? Because I know them. I don't believe it, 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 anyone else will come from after to tell me who these people are. So it is not enough to just inform us, sir. We should be involved in determining who are these people. To the extent that they've done in the past, or don't be carried along, it is wrong, and you should correct it now. You should correct it now, sir. I don't think it will be the next pandemic. You will correct it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, based on the advice you gave to uh, the task force, 
and that advice was uh, has to do with engage in a media outfit that should be able to defend whatever action they do. Uh, my emphasis is based on what I read from the social media that uh, the task force has compound that it has spent a billion naira in trying to sensitize the public. Whether it's true or false, NCDC. And whether it is true or false, the other questions that are likely to follow is how did they get the one billion naira? If there is a need for the National Assembly to appropriate that money, has it been appropriated by the National Assembly? So many other issues will arise from that case. So please, like you have advised them, let them try as quickly as possible to engage a, a, a media outfit. I don't know whether Elder Lai Mohammed was there when you gave that advice or not. And I see him trying to, you know, maybe put it in Thank you, Mr. President. No. Uh, the meeting is largely on the issues of uh, uh, fiscal uh, stimulus by the federal government and of course uh, we had briefings from the central bank governor, from the minister of finance and the minister of state petroleum as well as the PMD of the NNPC. And I believe uh, the meeting which was, more, which, which was uh, really elaborate uh, has uh, been able to uh, they have been able to explain the step they have taken so far uh, by the federal government and what we are looking at uh, is how this stimulus will reach out to the grassroots. That's the most important thing. And of course, uh, uh, this meeting is ongoing. Uh, we are likely to meet again in the next one week. But so far, what they have explained to us is satisfactory. We are really happy that the federal government has taken the initiative to be proactive in the way they handle this issue. You think, Mr. Uh, we know that these are not very good times for Nigeria. I mean, given the price of the crude oil, you know, in the international market, and that our 2020 budget is primarily based on this assumption of the crude oil price. Now we have a price of 16 dollar per barrel, and our cost of production is about 30 dollar per barrel. How can Nigeria come out of this? Yeah, we also discuss uh, the issues of uh, uh, competition between. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia, which largely affected uh, the price of uh, crude oil globally. But of course, we are also aware that uh, the cost of production uh, in Nigeria, the average is about uh, 28 to 29 dollars per barrel. And as we are talking, the price of crude oil has really gone down tremendously. So it's a major challenge. That is the reason why we are looking at. Uh, amending the budget and the Minister of Finance uh, by next one week hopefully should come up with a proposal and at this material time we have to now uh, look at the situation and find a way to reduce uh, some spendings. Largely some uh, spendings are not necessary, some are not important and I believe uh, if you look at those areas, we can be able to manage the situation. This, the problem is not only about Nigeria, it's a global uh, crisis. Because we are in recession, no country in the world uh, is uh, free of this uh, problem. There's a global recession and I believe uh, we will look into the issue. But of course, we also believe the 500 billion uh, uh, stimulus by the federal government is a bit uh, low. And we believe uh, they can add more because uh, a lot of people in this country uh, need support. Uh, a lot of people have to depend on working daily to earn their livings. And of course, when you ask them to stay at home, don't come out. We have to find a way to support them. There are a lot of, um, we are more concerned about those people that are into small businesses. We need to support them. But the framework 
already announced by the federal government, we believe uh, might not necessarily be working at this material time. So that is why we have some more questions and we need answers from the presidential uh, tax force because we believe uh, we have been hearing a lot of uh, complaints from our constituencies. A lot of people who actually are supposed to benefit from this stimulus uh, 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 support by the government are not benefiting from it. So if the 500 billion um, stimulus response is not um, enough, what will be enough? No, 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 we are not uh, ready to, we have not agreed on any figure, but we believe it's actually uh, small. But not, we are not even talking about whether it is small, uh, but we know it's small. But the most important thing is, we believe, even if we have to add it, but we must have a framework where the money must reach the right people. And so now, I'm not sure the money is reaching to the right people. And I believe maybe uh, we need to look into the issue and we have to be very careful. And there are a lot of uh, individuals who have made uh, contributions. And we believe the approach is really wrong. If you contribute money to the federal government, you cannot decide what you want the money to be done. Because if you want to go into social responsibility, uh, you can go and do whatever you want to do on your own. But when you donate money uh, to the federal government, you cannot also come back again and say, okay, I want this money to be spent on social things. Because that is wrong. And this is the areas where we believe uh, those donating the money should only donate the money and decide and they have no right to decide on what the money should be done. Thank I think you. That is the issue. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.